I'm going to sh- listen to a scripture. Now, the scripture I want to read, I'll read the, uh, the, uh, the Christmas story in a little bit, but I want to read a scripture that's like really not a Christmas scripture at all. It's a scripture, actually an Easter scripture, after the resurrection of Christ, and the people were reminiscing. That's where they, I'm going with this. They were reminiscing about Jesus, looking back. As we celebrate the birth of someone, we often will look back on their life, and that's where I'm going to go this morning. And so we're going to look at some people who are looking back and reminiscing on their relationship with Christ. And I'm looking at the scripture in uh, Luke chapter 24, reading first from verse 13. So listen to the word of God. Here it is. It says, that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. Everything that happened. Everything. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that happened there the last few days. What things, Jesus asked? Well, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and they crucified him. We had hoped he was a Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing. And they they had seen angels who told them that Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see it. Sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people. You find it so hard to believe that all the prophets, uh, believe all that the prophets had written in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. And Jesus acted as if he was going on. But they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So we went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. And then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were open and they recognized him. And at that moment, He disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were back on their way to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He's appeared to Peter. This ends the reading of God's word. So question, have you ever been to a birthday party of an older person? Right? Anybody ever been to a birthday party of an older person, right? The person is 80 or 90 or let's say 100. All right? They're 100. Oh, shucks. I wanted to get a rocking chair up here. I forgot that. So we're going to plant this person right here. Here's the rocking chair. Do you see it? The old person sitting in the rocking chair, rocking back and forth, right? Now, how's this party go? Everybody in the family is invited. It's their 100th birthday. So everybody, their, their children are there. Their grandchildren are there. And their great-grandchildren are there. And maybe great-great-grandchildren are there. Nieces and nephews and cousins. And how many people are there? Tell me how many. 64, she said. 100 what? Uh, so she said, I'm going to go with 64 because 100 something is getting a little too crowded. 64. And they're all in your house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's summertime, so that's good. We can, and it's a beautiful day, so we, we have a little tent we rented for the event, and so we can be inside and outside. So what's it, how's this party going? Well, some of you showed up late. Some of you showed up. Some uh, were on time, and we're, we're all here. Now we're all here. Now it's time to eat. And so we sit down. We have chicken barbecue or hamburger barbecue or something like that. We have potato chips and ring bologna, because this is in Burke's Con, eh, that we're part, that we're celebrating this. 
And, and then after we eat all, the, all that stuff, now what are we going to eat? Now what's going to happen? We're going to bring out what? And we're going to sing happy birthday. And there's going to be a hundred candles in the cake. And the old lady's going to pass out as she tries to blow them all out. And her oxygen's going to catch on fire, you know? Like, I don't know. Maybe we'll just put a, one of those where they have the number one and zero and zero. And we'll make it more simple for her, okay? All right? Now, now we've all sang happy birthday. We blew out the candles. And now what happens? Now what happens? Well, the, kid, the, the families with the little children, those kid, kids are getting antsy. And, and we, let's take them over here. We have a little swimming pool. We don't have a big pool. We just have a little kiddie pool. So they're playing around the pool and they're splashing water. And then some other people are shooting baskets in the driveway. And some other people are clustered up. Some, they're just gathered. They're here and there. Where's, where's granny? She's sitting on the rocking chair. And how many people are with her? No. Oh, what did you say? None. Yeah, well, I know. No, in a group of 64, there's always two kind-hearted people. <laughs> Am I right? Am I describing this correctly? There's two kind-hearted people that know. So many of us don't know how to talk to a, a person who can't carry on their end of the conversation. I can talk to people that can't carry on the end of the conversation as I speak for myself and for them. And I just, I love talking to myself. So it works out fine. But those people, some people, it's just like you don't know. And it's like. Granny, we love her, we love her, we love her, but she doesn't bring a lot to the table. Like, what's new? Nothing's new, everything is old. <laughs> but if she's 100 years old, and she's sitting here, and, and there, there are a couple of people sitting here, right? But most of us are clustered there, and there, and there, and there, and she's largely, after the singing of happy birthday and the cake, she's largely ignored and we're just enjoying a family reunion of our 64 people, right? I want to talk about a time when Jesus was ignored. Okay, there was a, there's one, at least one story I can think of where Jesus was ignored. It was a little awkward, but he was ignored by at least one person in the story. Here's, here it is. Here's the story. It's in Luke 10. Again, not a Christmas story. Sorry, I'm violating the rules. But Mary and Martha have a party. They invite the disciples, all 12 of them, and Jesus, that's 13. Mary, Martha, their brother might be there. That would be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, plus a couple of other followers. You know, there's like 23 people or 49 or whatever it is. And guess who's making the meal? Martha. Martha now, you, did you have to say it with that tone of voice? Martha. Is. <laughs> it sounded like I am. You know what I mean? Right? You know what I mean? Anybody agree with her? I'm making the meal. Now let me read the, let me read the scripture, okay? Here we go. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Mar Martha welcomed him to her home. Her sister Mary, Mary, sat in the house at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner, dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, it doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I am doing all the work. Tell her to come and help me. Okay? Can you see this going down? Can you see this happening, right? Now think about it. Think about your family member who was 90 or 80 or 70 or whatever the, the, the event was. Your grandmother or aunt or whoever, that last party... Can anybody tell me what you ate? Now, that's a tricky one. No, we don't remember what we ate. Like Martha's killing herself over this food, and we don't even remember what we ate. When my grandmother was 75 years old, my grandma Lynn, my mother's mother, when she was 75, we went to some restaurant. I don't know the restaurant. And uh, we ate there at the restaurant. I don't remember what I ate. And while we were sitting there, one of my biggest life regrets, my brother said, while we were sitting there, he said, you know what we should have done for Grandma? We should have all gone out to a wrestling event. Like, you know, the wrestling that you see, used to see on Saturday mornings where it's all fake and that kind of thing, as my grandmother used to watch that. Now that would have been a memory, but instead we went to some stupid restaurant, ate food I don't remember anymore. Like we get all into things we won't remember anyway. You know what I mean? Like, they should, Mar Martha should have ordered out to Mission Barbecue and it would have been fine. 
Am I right? Am I right? Would have been much better. Because look, think about it. Now think about it here. Jesus is with them. And this is like, how many times do you get to sit down with Jesus? Jesus is with them. And you're making a meal. How many of us can get occupied by detail and stuff at Christmas? Anybody able to get occupied? Anybody? What occupies us? What? What? Everything, she said. Like, okay, I'll say it. Gifts, right? Wrapping gifts. Cards. Pictures. Decorations. Food. And whatever else. You know, and problems that are related to those things and just craziness. And we get all caught up in all these things. And in the, in the experience of getting all caught up by all these things, we're kind of like Martha, missing the point. We're missing the point. This is about the birthday of Jesus and we should be celebrating his birthday. But here's, here's what we typically do for Jesus on his birthday. Here, Jesus, is a rocking chair. Sit right here. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Uh, oh, no. Before we do, happy birthday, Jesus. How old are you? You know, that's what we do. Am I right? Let me tell you about my grandfather's birthday. When my grandpa, Lynn, was 80 years old, you know what we did? Now, again, that's my mother's father. Before his birthday, he was born October 3rd, 2013, died April, uh, August 4th, 2006. When he was 80 years old in 1993, we decided to have, we we're going to have a birthday party for him. By this time, he lives in Florida. My grandmother's died. And uh, we're going to have a birthday party. And we had food. I don't know what we had. We had a cake. I don't know what it looked like. But my uncle and aunt, my mother and father, my brother and I, and our spouses, and my cousins and their spouse, we all got together, we talked about my grandpa Lynn. And we talked about all the stories. And then, for his birthday, we made this game. It's called Around Frank's World in 80 Years. All right? And it's based on a game called Careers. Has anybody ever heard of the game Careers? Linda has. Anybody else? Okay, so Linda, if you want to play careers sometime, we can play careers together. You like it? Yeah, it's a good game. It's an old game. It's a good game. So we made this board, and there's 70, this is kind of, this is how the game is designed in careers, but we, we made adaptations to it. And there's 74 blanks in here that we filled out, all related to my grandfather's life. 74 blanks about my grandfather. And, and they're all true or exaggerations of truth you know how i say that everything i say is 80 percent accurate the the 20 percent that's inaccurate is the fun stuff so i'm going to read a couple of these squares that you could land on you get hearts and stars and money uh here's let's see i'll start here this is i mean there's 74 of them i'm not going to read unless you want me to um here's one Crashes W uh, YMCA dance go to jail. Now the go to jail is a 20%. That's not true, but he did crash a YMCA dance, climbed through a window. That's where he met my, my grandmother in Allentown. He climbed through a dance, okay? I think he also owned a dance studio at some point. Here, this one says sues Reading Railroad and wins twenty thousand dollars. He did sue the Reading Railroad. I thought it was seven, but it's the board is probably right. $20,000. Here's what happened. He worked for the Rating Railroad as a welder, and he, he came upon, at some point, these train tracks, and the grass was growing up on either side, and he went across the road, and looked, and everything's cool, and he drives across, and a train comes along and squashes him. He survives. He's in the hospital, and he sued the Reading Railroad and won $20,000, and he took the $20,000 and bought a farm outside of Burnville near the Christmas Village and developed a poultry farm. He became a poultry farmer. He grew up, he was, he was born in Bethlehem, a little town of, and uh, he became an a egg farmer. He had a poultry farm. And you know how he learned how to do a poultry farm? He took a Penn State correspondence course, and that's, that's his story, and it all came because he was hit by a train. That's true, that's true stuff. And there's, there's cards in this board. Here's a life experience card, just like, and here's a BM card. Uh, it's, it's board moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's one. Okay, whoops. Uh, uh, here. This is 
100% true, okay? This is 100% true. His daughter, who would be my mother, okay? It says, daughter's algebra book falls down out Hoss hole. Gum doesn't stick. Gum on stick fails. Lose two hearts. So my mother came home from school one day. My mother came home from school, school one day, and she was in the outhouse, and she dropped her out, and she dropped her algebra book down the outhouse hole. So my brother decides, I got to get it out, because you know you want to take it to school the next day, right? <laughs> of course you do. We'll clean it off. And so she takes a stick. And she puts her bubble gum on it and sticks it down the hole, trying to put it out, pull it out. It doesn't succeed, so she loses two hearts in the game. That's a hundred percent true. <laughs> oh, here's one. Here's one too. This is about my grandmother. Anybody remember something called Fuller Brush Man? Oh yes. Do you see? Put your hands up again if you heard that. See, those are the old people in the room, everybody. Just so you know, what what, what an old person looks like. We learned last week you're old when you're very old when you're 84. Anyway, so there used to be I don't really know. It's before my time, but a Fuller Brush man used to come. He door to door salesman and sell household stuff, I suppose. And and he was called a Fuller Brush man. Now my parent, my grandparents by this time lived outside of Burnville on a farm, and they had a lane that was like a quarter mile long, dirt lane, okay? So one time, it says wife, that would be my grandmother, wife gets Fuller Brush Man salesman to sweep out the lane, because my grandmother, classic line, the Fuller Brush Man knocked on her door and said, hey, do you want to buy some, oh, she said, do you want to buy some brushes? And she said, oh, go sweep out the lane. <laughs> what is a delayed reaction to that laugh? My grandfather, when he was hit by a train, decided he's going to pursue Jesus. And he said, if you let me live, I'm going to go to church for the, next, for the rest of my life. He went for three weeks. Didn't, didn't accept Christ in his life until he was in his 70s, 80s. And when he was in his 70s, 80s, he started going to church. He, he became a follower of Christ. And he, he was an altar boy. He was an altar boy in his church. He lit the candles in the altar that Kelly did. Ke did you notice Kelly couldn't light this candle? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know, but she's, she's just, we got to get somebody else next year. This is just not good. Anyway, anyway, he was asked to be an altar boy. So here it says, asked to be church altar boy, can't light candles is what it says here in the game. Just like Kelly Clark, she would understand that one. Then this one says, caught speeding in a motorcycle, five, fine, $500. That's because when my grandfather was 75 years old, he never did get fined or caught. But he used to ride 90 miles an hour at the age of 75 on his motorcycle. I love my grandfather. And last one here, holds block and Parcheesi for three hours, lose three stars. We used to play Parcheesi. My uncle, Donnie, myself, my father, and me. And we'd play and complain about each other. Isn't that a cool game? Isn't that a cool memory? So you know what we did? We gave the gift to my grandfather, and when we gave the gift to my grandfather, we played the game, and you know what? He wasn't doing, he wasn't sitting in the rocking chair. He wasn't pushed off to the side. We were celebrating his life, and, and it seems to me that's the way it should be. We should celebrate the life of the person on their birthday. We should. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know what? I know, and you know this, I, when I do funerals, I go to the family, I sit down with the family, and say, okay, tell me about your loved one who just died. And, talk, and I write it all down. Sometimes I think, they tell me all these cool things. And I think to myself, how cool it would be if the person that died would be here and hear all this stuff. And I wonder, did, did they even know that you, my deceased person, blessed me in all these different ways and how much you mean to me? Did they even know this? And I'm thinking about Jesus. Like Jesus has seen, he's been sitting, it's his birthday. And he's sitting over here in a chair and we're ignoring him. So then I jump, my mind jumps to the story I read in the scripture a few minutes ago. This is, this is what it says in Luke 24. It says at one point, after they walk with Jesus, they, 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 all of a sudden, it says suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. Like all of a sudden, whoa, we've just been talking to Jesus. And then my favorite part of this for today is they said to each other, as they're talking with you, didn't our hearts, didn't your heart, was your heart burning? D wasn't our hearts burning within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within an hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem and they found the 11 disciples along with the others who had gathered with them. And you know what they did? 
They all talked about Jesus. They all went down memory lane and were talking about Jesus. And if you look at the Bible, you think about the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. How did this Bible come into being? It was as a result of people talking endlessly about, do you remember? Do you remember when Jesus did this? And do you remember when Jesus said that? And you remember when he healed this person? Do you remember? Do you re oh, yeah, I remember. And then you add it up together. And it's like they're constantly, constantly celebrating Jesus' life. So here's what I thought we could do this morning. Okay? We're going to create our own verbal Christmas, uh, Zion's Church diary. And we're going to reminisce about Jesus. About Jesus' intersection within our lives. I'll go first. But I want you to share briefly, like three, four sentences. Briefly, three, four sentences. Because we're going to have 15 people sharing. And I don't have any plants out there. Okay? You're going to all talk about... I'm going to go around the room, just like I do at funerals. So I'll have my microphone. And I'll go around the room. And you're going to tell us... When God touched your life. I apologize to people at home. You're just going to have to listen in. But you can think and reflect, okay? About when God touched your life in a special way. Because it's like we're celebrating Jesus' life. And we're kind of doing it like my game with my grandfather. Where we're going down memory lane. And we're saying, I remember this. and this. Okay? And I need 15 people. I chose 15 people because it's like I want a bigger number that you know... Maybe I need to say something because he's never going to get 15 and I want to get out of here. So I'm going to have to come up with something. You know what I mean? So I'll go first and my number, somebody has to count for me, but my numbers uh, don't, my two things, I'm going to tell two stories and uh, they don't count. <laughs> they don't count. So one story, I, some people who have been around for a long time know and other people wouldn't know because I haven't told the story. And then a second story where nobody heard this story first. Uh, and because I'm setting the rules, I can go more than four sentences. So that's the way it is. It's just a double-crossing thing. When I was in college, I was in a musical group called The Turning Point. And we traveled around northeastern United States, singing to different churches. It was like promotional for the college thing. There were six of us, three guys, three girls. And I, I was one of the vocalists. And uh, we sang in Maryland all the way through Maine and all the states in between and out as far as Jefferson, Ohio. And on June 13th, of that year, 1978, we were traveling in Interstate 80 near Grove City, going to Jefferson, Ohio. We had an accident. The soprano Janus was driving, flipped the van upside down, slid 70 feet into a bridge abutment. Marie was thrown out of the vehicle. I saw Marie away from the vehicle on the highway. My friend Dave's feet were hanging out the window. Um, Brian Stevenson, who, became a, who has become a lawyer and fights for Equal Justice Initiative, the movie Just Mercy was based on him. Brian was in the car, myself, and so on. Janice was the only one injured. Janice was killed. And it's like, whoa, Janice was killed. And uh, we were paid to do this, like scholarship money given to us to do this, and we had the option of just bagging it. But we didn't. We continued to sing concerts throughout the rest of the summer. We went back out on tour and sang. And that was the first time I'd had any public speaking experience because we had to sing solos. We had each had solos we sang. And if my number was up to sing a solo, I'd have to give testimony publicly. And I, so we did 80 concerts that summer. And then I did it again for the school year for 40 more concerts. We went everywhere and did all kinds of things. That was a time, maybe... An early, one of the earlier times in my life when I really felt close and blessed by God and just drawn near to him. That was the time when Jesus meant something to me. And another time. Now this is, this is by comparison much more mundane. And it means something to me. And I, I throw this in because I want to counterbalance it. So whatever you're going to share, it doesn't matter what you share. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small and tiny. But do you see that wire over there? Uh, over there? There's a wire hanging there. That's, that's for Christmas Eve, okay? And that wire there, we're getting, the, 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 the actor's going to hang Christmas, uh, Christmas balls on the wire. And I, I initially put some yarn up in the back wall, and the yarn was like, the balls all ra rolled to the center. So I thought, well, i got to get some. And I didn't want to buy a new wire. You know what I mean? And I could, have you ever had this experience where, like, I'm looking for, you're, you're looking for something you can't find. Anybody ever had that experience? Do you ever pray about that? Well, I looked several times. I looked here and looked there and looked there. I couldn't find it. It was a couple of days. I looked there. It's 
a couple days ago, and then, and then I, one day I just thought, I went downstairs, my new workshop, and I was going to go tr try to look again, and as I'm going down the stairs, downstairs, I, I pray, God, can you help me find this thing? It's just a silly prayer. Immediately I thought, you know where I could look? And guess what I found? My wire. Thank you, God. And it's not very profound, but it was like I felt close to God, and that moment was really cool. Now it's your turn, okay? You got 15. Who's going to go first? A time when you felt close to God. And what we're doing is we're, we're taking Jesus off the rocking chair, and we're saying to Jesus, Jesus, you have blessed me. Here's how. <clears throat> Thank you all for sharing. I, uh, I thought of one story I wanted to share. Uh, I thought I put it in a sermon, and I haven't heard myself say it yet publicly, and maybe it'll come up, and if it does, you just pretend like you never heard it before because it's a story that I thought, I'm not going to tell this story, so I'll tell it now. I was trying to share the faith with somebody that had a lot of questions, and uh, they just want to explore the faith. They had a lot of doubts and things like that, so I, I like those conversations, and we were having fun going back and forth and so on, and at the end of the conversation, I said to the person, I'll tell you what, I, I said, let me just pray for you, and I pray that God would reveal himself to you reveal just for God would reveal because ultimately God is the the one that witnesses and brings people to himself in my opinion so let me pray for you I prayed for him three days later he's a, he, he he wanted a work change where he get more hours because he needed a little more money and he came home and he said to his wife I God revealed himself to me today I couldn't believe it and he's entirely skeptical entirely skeptical about the existence of God and all that he says, well, God revealed. She said, oh, really? How? And he had already told her about the work change because he got the work changes that he was hoping. You mean because you got these extra hours? He said, no, 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 no. There's something else. This guy's job, he works at one of the warehouses that we love, you know, the warehouses we love. And, and he unloads trucks and loads trucks and that kind of thing. So he was having problems really believing the existence of God or whether God was real or not. And so he goes and he lifts up the back door to open up this truck to unload the truck. And inside the truck, it's just filled with all these boxes and every single box, an entire tractor trailer, every box in the entire tractor trailer says, trust in God, 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 every single box, every box, all the way back, 50 whatever feet, all the whole way back, every box and inside every box, this is 100% true, yard signs that said, trust in God, trust in God, trust in God, trust in God, trust in God. <laughs> he said to his boss, did you ever see anything like that? He said, I never saw anything like that before. And uh, you think maybe God revealed himself. Maybe, I don't know, we'll go figure. He still doesn't believe. <laughs> it's like that's called being hit over the head with a two by four. Well, let me read the Christmas story. I'm going to read it. You just want to, I want you to listen to it. Then I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. Somebody asked me to sing O Holy Night. So I'm going to sing O Holy Night. Gabe played O Holy Night earlier. I'm going to sing it in a minute. But I thought, okay, so I'm going to sing O Holy Night. Let's read about the Holy Night that I'm about to sing about. And let's think about what made it holy. So here it is. The Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. It says this. At that time. Go with me to this place. At that time, the Roman emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census be taken throughout the Roman Empire. He decreed that. This is the first census that was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Why would they put that in the Bible? Like, that's superfluous. Why? Because this is a historic, actual event, and we want to tag it and base it. We want to give it a historic anchor. This is a real story. This is not a made-up story. This is a real deal. This is rooted in history. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient town home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Now the night, that night, the holy night, that night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. 
Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloths lying in a manger. Suddenly, in this holy night, suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of other angels, armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. O holy night. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said about this child. And all who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. A holy night. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill Rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine. For the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, by grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, oh, praise his name forever, his power and glory forevermore proclaim his power. bulletin over there. What's next? There it is. 
Oh, the Apostles' Creed. Okay, we're going to state our faith. Now, for those of us in the contemporary service, we're not as familiar to this, perhaps. But this is, this is a creed that was written, composed hundreds and hundreds of years ago that say, what do we believe? What's the core of what we believe? Like, like the essence, when you strip all the extras off of it, what is the essence of it? Here's the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand as we express the Apostles' Creed and what we believe. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead, <coughs> ascended into heaven, and sitteth in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for the chance to be here today. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate your birth and your life, your intersection, your life intersection with us with all the stories that were shared earlier about your intervention, your crossing paths with us, watching over us faithfully. Lord, we just praise you today for your love. We praise you for our pleasure in walking life with you, always knowing that you're under our direction and care. And I pray that if there's anybody here, anybody that comes into this room or space tonight, or anybody that listens to the programs tonight on the internet, that you would draw each and every one of us unto yourself so that we would all, all of us, those who do believe and those who do not yet believe, that we would all come into relationship with you and experience your Holy Spirit's presence with us day in, day out, always. Lord, we pray for that, your will to be done in our lives. And we lift up before you anybody here that has any kind of concern whatsoever and pray that you would be at work in all those circumstances. And now we ask that you would hear us as we pray the prayer that your precious Son, our Savior and Lord, taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.